Hello YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, this was a this is a recording of a live stream that happened over in on ustream.tv. You can go there and search for Inky Obsessions and click follow and you should get notified whenever I go live. I also tweet it and put it on my personal and my art Facebook pages. Um so, all right, let's see what we got here. Lolly, are you Queen's Ink Lolly? I don't know that I ever knew your last name if you are. All right, somebody's giving me crap already out here. Eileen, shocker. <laughs> hey, CC. Welcome. And Dorothy, she doesn't have enough to spare to use them. All right, all right. The peanut gallery's already fired up. So, um, I see Cunningham, but are you Queen's Ink Lolly? I don't know if Lolly Cunningham is Queen's Ink Lolly. Maybe I know two lollies and didn't know it. <laughs> hey, Christy. Thanks for joining everybody. Oh, no, not Queens and Lolly. Okay. Well, welcome, Lolly. I got a new Lolly now. Can never have too many Lollies. I've always said that. Hey, Kathy. All right. So, you guys might have seen where I posted that I used my scanner mouse. My Halo scanner mouse. Which you just plug into your computer. And then the mouse has the reader in the bottom. And you just scan it across the page. I've demoed this before in previous. Hey, Lynn. Um, Preview older videos. I've demoed, demonstrated how to use this. And it's actually really accurate. It does a great job. However, hard lesson learned that after I did this on my UPO papers that I had not yet sealed with the varnish, it scratched them all up. And I was trying to pay close attention to my computer screen and not really looking at the um, at the papers that closely. Hey, Jean. Um, and then when I stopped, I was like, holy crap, look what I just did. So, what I think I, I was able to save them. I'm trying to remember which two they were. I was going to re-show you those. Um, this was one. Yeah, I can still see a few little scratches up in here. They're real fine. See them up there in that little gold bit right in front of my finger and down a little further. But this was scratched to hell and back. Um, but I spritzed them with water wherever they look scratched and let those pigments start to move on the UPO again and let it dry. And I mean, it's pretty much okay now. Changed the look of it a little bit, but who cares? They're all kind of random anyway. And this was another one. Um, trying to see if there's any leftover scratches. I don't see any. But this was another one, and it just kind of... That's right, Eileen, it's texture. Hey, Shauna. Hey, welcome. I haven't seen you for a while. Uh, these are all on the white UPO, uh, Lolly. I do have translucent, and I've used that a couple times. I prefer the white because I think the colors really pop. Tammy, hey. Welcome. Hope you're feeling better. Yeah, CB, once I scanned, once I sprayed it with that Kmar varnish, um, they were fine to scan. But without it, not so much. Um, but this one, I did, I came down yesterday and was playing around a little bit while I was waiting for those to dry. And um, look what look what happened over here. Look at all that little, those little legs and feathers happening in there. I'm, I'm, I don't know, you guys probably are sick of seeing this, but I'm mesmerized by it. And I can't help myself. Oh, Cece, I, um, hang on, what did you use to varnish with? Hang on. Uh, I saw your video this morning of your um, 
how you reorganized your watercolor palettes and your swatch card. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant. Love it. And um, if you guys are not patrons of CC's. Oh, hey, Darren. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Um, CC, if you'd like to put your link up there um, for your Patreon page, go ahead and throw it up. I think links are open. Um, yep, they're on. And uh, happy to sh have you share your link there. But she just put a, a video out on her Patreon page about her new way to do her swatch cards. Really cool. This is the varnish that I use when I spray the Yupo. It's a Krylon Kmar varnish, and if you look right there, it's good for watercolor. So it doesn't somehow reactivate this. Um, it seals it and puts a nice sheen on it. So, um, hang on. Anyway, so here's more of those. Here's the green one after it dried that I did. And I don't know what happened here. Might have had another little award show up in my work. Oh, thanks, Jen, for putting the link up for CC. Hey, Carol. Oh, good for you. I'm glad you support her. That's um, sh There's so many people that have Patreon pages. She's the only one that I subscribe to. I just love her stuff. And she did some really cool stuff using my stamps the other day. It was really, really cool. Um, she's blushing. <laughs> um, this is that piece. I showed this, uh, I think I put it on Instagram and shared it on Facebook. But this is one of those neutral colored, uh, the bigger pieces that I cut up. And this is on a, um, a cradle board, right? Yeah, a little crazy will help you here, Darren. Um, but this is the um, that one that I did. And I really like it. It's, you know, it's not my palette, but I still really like it. A couple people have already contacted me wanting to buy it. I kind of made it with my nephew in mind. Um, So I'm, I'm thinking about, since I love doing this, and since I only have so much wall space, that I might start putting some out on um, my Etsy shop. I just wanted to give these a little while because I, I guess they'll hold up okay. I mean, the the watercolors all have good light, last, light fast readings. I've sealed everything. Um, I even sprayed again over the, the corrugate. Um, So I think, I think they'll be okay. I mean, I don't know that they're going to be here in a hundred years, but what the hell, neither am I. <laughs> Send your complaints to my, my ancestors or my predecessors, whatever the hell are they are, future generations. But here's some of that corrugate that I did. Um, and this was just black corrugated cardboard sheets. So this was a big sheet. And I, I made a big blob of my rose gold so I could get a nice big brush in there. And um, that's the rose gold, right, on the corrugate. And then I added some of the Magic Indian Summer. And you can already see the color shift in this. See it go from bronze to that pinky stuff? Isn't that crazy? But this is where I cut slices from that I put on that board I just showed you, right? What else did it say on the bottle? It's Kmar. K-A-M-A-R. That's the key right there, I think. And that's for watercolor. Oh, you like the rose gold. Oh, good, CC. I, I think it's pretty close. Uh, given the pigments that I have. Now, I think it would be cool to mix in a little bit of this with it. I don't know what that shift would do. But I, can't, I don't think they have this pigment on their site. Just the pants, I think. Yeah, uh, Jean Paula, uh, last year at the Art Weekend, brought her thing to make her own corrugated cardboard 
um, that we use to make putting a journal together. But here's this color, and then this is the um, a piece that had the Pacific, what the hell is it called? Magic Pacific Lagoon pigment that I made watercolors out of. And in person, I only have to shift this a little bit because of all the hills and valleys and the different angles. I can see purple and turquoise with just the slightest move here. Now, I don't know if you guys are going to see that. I don't know why this camera is so hard to pick up the purple. It looks kind of browns out, but it's not. It is purple. But um, anyway, that was that one. And uh, I did hear some leftover little bits and bobs from cutting up that other piece. Oh, this is the other one that I scratched. I can still see some fine scratches in here. Uh, over there, you can see. They're fine. You can see them. But it's much better than it was. But not something I'd throw away. This one didn't come out the way I thought it was going to. Uh, they rarely do. <laughs> so this was a, a, a metal paint, full metal paint, real heavy acrylic paint that was copper. And then I sprayed on the acid stuff that makes it patina patty. Could you use the crimper on Yupo that has already been watercolored? I don't know if that Yupo would hold the crimp or not, Kathy. That would be interesting. Jean will have to test a piece for us since she's got one of those crimpers. I I don't know, but that wouldn't that be interesting? I bet it would. I don't know if my if my mouse scratched the watercolor off. I have a feeling going through that crimping, it would uh, um, really booger it up. But I'm I don't know. I'm not sure. But anyway. Um, this one has, I mean, I think when you cut, if you cut it up, you know, and, and use it, it would, it would be kind of cool, but you can see that copper is really pretty shiny. And then you get that patina where the acid hit it. I think it's pretty good with the right one in mind, right? The right piece in mind. And this one, I used a different acid. See where this is more green and this came up more bluish, but then I took my brayer with some um, dioxazine, purple, golden fluid, acrylic, um, and a little bit of white fluid acrylic and mixed it up and took my brayer with the purple and hit the high point. So let me see if you can see. Oh, hello. So you get the favorite color palette in there, right? And that's kind of what the piece looked like that I... I put together myself that first board that I put together. Um, hey, Janet. Right, so that's that piece. And a couple of these, eh, not so much. This, I, uh, what the hell did I do to this? I don't know what I used to paint. This has some PBO uh, green blue hitting the high points. I painted it purple. It's not going to show. It's too deep. Those crevices are a dark purple, and then that's PBO green-blue on the high points. That's a pretty good picture of what it looks like. And this one, I just left the black and hit it with the PBO on the top. So I don't know. I might use that at some point. I might not. And this one, I just painted. Uh, I used the purple and came down halfway, and then I went with the PBO green-blue and kind of made it, oops, hello, kind of made a gradient for that let me bend it this way where i can bend it along with the and that's it's shinier in person than it looks there but you guys know what those pbos do right so i figured on black they would look pretty cool it's all right um here's half of the big sheet that i used i might do something else with that today but that's what i was doing here of late um here's my leftovers and I also tested, we were talking about testing masking, masking fluid. Hey, Caroline. Testing the masking fluid um, on Yupo. Now, this is a crappy example of any kind of a gemstone, trust me. But what happened was I was going to use this. And the whole flipping needle pulled out of it. So I have this larger hole that it comes out of. 
and that didn't work so well because I got big fat blobby lines but it peeled off of here like I grabbed one piece of it and the whole thing peeled off like a facial mask Patty where did you get the larger sheets of the corrugate oh gosh you know what I don't remember I think it might have been at Blick online Denise but I got silver and gold and hot pink and blue and black and I got one was black with the wavy lines instead of the straight lines. Oh, does Darren, do you live near Jean? Jamie! Hello! I used to, when I started messing with the corrugate, I bought some uh, 12 by 12 sheets that were craft colored. Um, I got them on Amazon and they were readily available. And then all of a sudden they had like an eight week delivery and they were a ridiculous amount of money. So I never got any more about that. I guess somewhere in my search to find other stuff, I found these big sheets. Um, hang on, I'll show them to you. Maybe the packaging says something. Hold on, let me. Let me have a little look-see. But I would love to know where I put the 12 by 12 pieces of the craft. <laughs> oh, God forbid I organize and get myself all screwed up here. But here's how big these suckers are. Yeah. I guess they're like a 22 by 30, maybe. But, um... Here's the silver. I mean, it's really flashy silver. And here's a gold. Here's the blue. That's too blue blue for me. I'd have to do something with that. But look at that hot pink. I mean, get your sunglasses on, people. Hey, Galena. That actually almost hurts my eyes. And then I got a piece of purple. That's kind of more violet than the purple that I... Well, the colors in here, though, no too. So, yeah. See, I'm... Oh, you know what? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut a piece of this off, and I'm going to paint it with Lagoon and see what that how that looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there's a number, a little handwritten number on here, on a sticker. Uh, maybe if you go to Blick and put that number in, see if it comes up, 741031. I don't know if it will or not. We'll try something with that. Yeah, they all have just a little number sticker on them. And then here's the black with the, um, the, can you see those squiggly lines? Focus. There you go. They're kind of waves. Mad scientist. I love mad. Oh, speaking of mad scientist. Cola art. That's a new name. Welcome. Here's a piece of card of um, the, the craft. But one thing I, I wish that this didn't have, see the seams that come down like every inch and a half vertically. I'd rather they not be there. I'd rather it just be all corrugate. And then I got a white piece. So that's what I got. But when I got these. Oh, wait a minute. Here's a different sticker on the white one. Hold on. The um, This has a website. This is too big to get underneath. The, it's. Oh, can I get it under there without tearing up my camera? Probably not. This is so big. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. It's going to be sideways. Will it focus? GPCpapers.com. G like George, P like Patty, C like Charlie. GBCpapers.com. 
That's what's on the white one. So I don't know if that's where I got it. I don't know what the hell that site is. I don't know, but that's the only identifying information that's on any of that. Um, yeah, I think it's it's just how it's manufactured, and it probably gives it a little more oomph. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to put some Pacific Lagoon on here and see see what we get and let this dry a while. And I think I'm going to put together, use some of my pieces I've already done to put together another board. Um, I'd like to have a batch that I could use my big brush on. Well, I'm just going to use, oh crap, I'm going to get all over it already. Those of you who do stream YouTube for now, I apologize because I cannot subscribe. I like you. Oh, yeah. Some people that are remote have issues with uh, what they can do and how much they can participate and all that good stuff. All right. Let's see what happens here. Let me pull you in a little bit. This is the Pacific Lagoon that I mixed with the creamer. Uh, medium, the watercolor medium. Isn't that stuff nice, CC? That creamer medium? It, in my opinion, much nicer than the Schmincke. Um, the some of the ones in the Schmincke that I mixed still are sticky to the touch and still look and feel wet from weeks ago. Um, so, Caroline, are you Remy, Caroline? I, for, I think I knew you were on one other time with us, but I forgot the screen name because that's what I do. I forget everything. All right, I'm just going to let this sit and dry. Before. I don't want to waste pigment if it's not going to come out right. Oh, looking at that angle, everything looks purple because I see the purple piece of that. I don't know. We'll sit it up here and let that have its way with it before I put more on there. And we'll see what that looks like. Um, so I have, I don't know, I have these three boards. Let me zoom back out again. You're not going to be able to see. Yes! Yay, Caroline! So Caroline1310, well, Dragonfly Smiles, that's Kathy that was with me. Uh, Caroline, when we went to Jody's in last, uh, well, a year ago actually. Um, so you guys know each other and I didn't see Gala on today, but Gala often comes on and her screen name is Gala, but, but Kathy is Dragonfly Smiles. So we got a little Remy reunion going on. Caroline, I'm telling you, you had like your stuff was my favorite, I think out of everybody there that you produced. And what I see you do online, she's got such a good eye and a exceptional artist, I think, in my humble opinion. All right, I don't know that that's going to be a good thing. We'll let that go. So, I was thinking about, and here's the real pain in the neck. These are just the size where one of these I couldn't cut up and make three into it, right? Is my camera cockeyed or am I cockeyed? Or, hang on, hold on to your lunch. There, that way is straight and then this is just isn't squared up. There's Gala. Hey. So this doesn't quite fit, right? So I I've thought about several different things to do here. I mean, I 
don't laugh. I know I've done some in the same colors, a couple here and there, same colors. Um, but I was thinking I could take, you know, slices. It's not tall enough this way, but I could take slices this way of wherever I find my favorite favoriteness out of. And only thing is, most of these are kind of a the design kind of goes this way with the vertical lines of all this stuff. Hey, Heidi. Um, Joan, on your iPad, do you see the little, like a cart, you know, the cartoon bubbles, the little caption icon? On mine, I see it up there, and if I click on that, I can see the chat. Hey, Patty, I made it. Ah, what's your name? Are you Patty, too? <laughs> um, hey, Debbie. Um, but anyway, Joan, if you see that little cartoon, like, air bubble, you know, uh, that on my mobile devices, that's what lets me get to the chat. But what happens in my chat when I do that on my phone, especially, is... Um, when I send a message, it locks up the video and I got to go back in and restart the video and then go back into the chat again to catch up. And then I've missed something. <laughs> Crap. So I'd like to also be able to incorporate bits of this corrugate up here. Um, so... You know, I always like a good triptych. But I'm thinking maybe what I should do is is maybe wait and go back and look through my 9 by 12 sheets so there's a lesser amount of waste. Um, I don't know. Still in the thinking stages on how I want to do that. Because I really do like that. Um, the corrugate factored in there. Um, and this is just a straight 11 by 14. So, you know, blew it down and there's that. But I think it needs something else. These are just panels that I happen to have. The, I didn't buy these special for this. They're just in the stash. Maybe I'll play with this one today. This I like these long skinny ones. And this gives me some area to play with. Um like this one. Now you guys that join later, I don't know if you saw this I did the other day. This one's 6 inches by 24, so it's hard to get in the whole shot. But here this one is again. And here's the corrugate with the rose gold and the Magic Indian Summer watercolors on it. And this is one of the earth tone pieces that I did that I cut up to fit. And then I got another piece of corrugate midway. And then another piece of Yupo. And the corrugate down here. So there's kind of the whole whole schmeal right there. So, uh, I don't know. I always like that format of that long skinny thing. I think it's cool. Um, uh, hey, Cass. I think, um, hey, May. I think a long skinny one like that is kind of cool. Like if you, you know, if you don't have a huge wall to put something big on or something that's landscape and you have like space between windows or between, beside a door and the lights above the light switches or something where you have a narrow piece of wall, you know, you drop one of these in there. Um, you know, and it's, uh, it's kind of a little, nice little pop. So, um. All right, now let me let me think. I kind of want to use either some of this, which would play well with these guys over here, of course. But I really like the one I did. Do you guys remember that one with the black in it? Um. 
but I'd like to throw a little bit of this out there somewhere. But I don't have anything that matches it. I'm going to have to make more. Um, let me hang on. Let me. I'm going to run upstairs. Chat amongst yourselves. YouTube, slide the bar over and skip past me. I'm going to run upstairs and get that other piece. I'll be right back. So this is the first one I did a week or two ago. I don't remember when I did it. Dream space. Oh, cool. Oh, that was you. <laughs> Welcome back. And now there's somebody named Hi saying hi. Interesting with these screen name changes. Hi, hi. <laughs> Uh, um, anyway, this is the one, and I can't remember the combination I used to get this corrugate this way. I know it was on the craft corrugate, but look closely. You can see I used the copper metallic paint, right? Somehow, I got that turquoisey blue in the creases. And then as it gets down here, it changed a little bit. And right, I put my thumb in it. Oh crap! Um, have to straighten those out again. And then here, I just flipped it and put the purple down at this end. But I, I like that with more black in it. Um. And this one was done with acrylic ink. And that so far is the only thing that I can get to um, stay that black on Yupo. Right? Everything else, you remember what it did. Remember that one that I was experimenting with and it was like almost all black? And then it started to, uh, hang on. It started to... Um, push the pigments around and that's how it ended up and that was almost all black when it was wet for you guys that were watching you get those big pieces you know caroline i don't remember i think hey deborah i think it might have been at blick but there was one that had a sticker on it and it said gpcpapers.com like george patty charlie papers.com was a sticker on the back of one of them um, the other ones just had stock numbers on them. Uh, but yeah, so that's what black watercolor and black liquid watercolor. And I, was it India ink? I think some of this was India ink because I tried to get something really black on there and it just pushed that crap out of there. Papermart.com. Oh, thanks, Jen. Um, so yeah, that's what that did. But this one stayed black. And I'm pretty sure that was my, uh, the Dale Rowney acrylic ink. So maybe I'll make another, um, with, uh, some black in it. Cause black makes everything pop a little papa, a little bit of papa helps. And, um, I think I got enough of these. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do a body of work with these colors. <laughs> so I want to put another coat of spray over this corrugate. Sit this over here out of harm's way because something usually gets harmed when it's in my way. Um, do I want to do some copper? 
I wonder if I have the right color of watercolor copper to make this one work. Let's see, shall we? I'm going to... Oh crap, where did I put that? And for my other 9 by 12 UPO pad. UPO, here we go. This is that one I just showed you with the black. That was done on the 9 by 12 and that's a 12 by 12 board it got mounted on. So I put an inch and a half of corrugate down each side. And it was just shy on the top and the bottom, but I black gessoed it. So the black just kind of blended in. So, um, hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, They don't really have a copper. Um, the glitter bronze is maybe pretty close. Throw in a little rose gold. That never hurt. That never hurt anybody. Patty, can you show us your paint color? You paint or color a piece of cord. Oh, okay. Well, mm. with this stuff, it's kind of tricky because it's um, it's got to dry in between before you can go to the second step, and then it's got to dry before you go to the third step. So I don't know if I can get it finished. Um, now the ones with watercolor. I mean, all I did with these was just paint the watercolor over it just lay the pigment down kind of heavy and that's just my metallic watercolors over black but this this stuff the patina stuff actually has to develop the patina where in the hell's the other one Ew, here so it's the copper paint then the acid over it and it all has to lay there um, Oh, let's see what this one's done now that it's dry. Oops. Nah, this didn't do any do, do me any big wows. Oh, speaking of big wows, I knew there was something I was going to tell you guys. See, this one, it's okay. It's not great. I'm not that wild about it. I think it's this is too red, the more violet than purple. Um, last night, Leslie Onstad from Color Art called me and was talking to me for a while and you may have seen me share her post they are coming out with you know they're twinkling h2o's right you guys remember these from for years right these are actually her watercolor but they're called twinkling h2o's and then these little pots she has read uh she's adjusted the formula so they're not as hard and don't take as long to re-wet that they'll lift more like you know a, a regular artist watercolor will um, and putting them in full and half pans to fit in the regular tins and yes I can hear the screams in the background they will be um, they will be out uh, hopefully in November but um, yeah I'm going to get some to demo here pretty soon and we'll be doing a stream or two or three with those because they are flipping yummy. Um, all right, let me put this to the side. Here's another piece that I, the, the black piece that I just showed you that I did, here's the sample that I pulled it off of. I had a piece of corrugate, one of the 12 by 12s, and I did half with rust, with the iron and rust, and half with the, I wish I could remember which product I used on this because this right here is the bomb. The one I did there, I didn't like it as much. But that piece, 
talk to Mama. And then here I didn't put the purple on it. I don't remember how I put the purple on it. It looks kind of... I must have brared it over the high points. But it looks kind of shimmery. I wonder what the hell I did. Whatever it was, was genius, I tell you. Genius. Yeah, she... Um, they had a ton, ton, ton of orders for primary elements come in when Anne-Marie Ritterhoff demoed them in her acrylic pores. People went nuts over them, and they are just getting to where they're caught up on some orders. I think by next week, she said they should be caught up. Um, and... Uh, which will give her some time to start with shipping the, um, the watercolors out. When they come out, they're, they're going to be out in November-ish. So I'm um, over here. I wish I knew where those Hang on. 12 by 12 pieces were. Hang on, let me look at my paper rack over here. I can see that I put them in my 12 by 12 paper rack with all the scrapbook papers. I don't think so. That 12 by 12 was a little sturdier than these huge sheets. Um, Sure, it was somewhere clever because that's that's the kind of girl I am. I'm very clever when it comes to hiding stuff for myself. Where are you? Huh, huh, huh. Well. really yanks my chain. I gotta tell ya. They'll show up when I don't want them. When I'm looking for something else. I'm sure they will. But anyway, let's carry on, shall we? So here's a humongous piece of the craft color, which is what I used before. Let me get this stuff out of my way. Um, I'm gonna cut this at least in half. So it's somewhat manageable. Um, Half-ish. And I might even half this again because that's a lot to paint. To try to show you guys how to do this. Oh, here's my one I did in just rose gold. Look at that one, CC. Uh, it's just rose gold over the black to make it pop. So I think when I did that piece that I really like, I believe at the time the only um, patina stuff I had was the 10 Second Studio Verde Paint Kit. And they were small bottles. These aren't even those. Um, and I think that was these. Is that copper? Yeah, that's copper, I think. And this, there was one that was an ox. Oh, holy crap. Ah, losing, losing control of my faculties. Yep, uh, Darren Minky is Joan. So that's like the iron one. Oh, I wonder what that was. That looks... 
Oh, I think this is the brass, and that's almost gone. I bet you that's what I used. And this one, I don't know what the hell that is. It doesn't look very pretty. But then I also have these swellagant ones. Oh, there's a piece. Oh, that's because it's over here. It's one I screwed up. I um, still have this one over there drying. This one turned out real a lot of green, like a bright yellowy green. And then I tried to put one of these finishes with a makeup sponge over it, and it just blobbed all over the place and kind of ruined it. But in between, you can see that real yellow green color in there. But the way this blob, here's another good piece of the green, and you can see a little bit of the brass paint under it. So these, these swellagants are really cool. Um, but these are done, usually you use this for clay. Yeah, I think they just went out, Eileen. I don't know. Laurie Lou! Hello, dear. Um, but they have... You know, a lot of their stuff is done on metal or polymer clay. Don't see it done so much on paper. Here's what I did with that turquoise and copper piece. I used this copper, Modern Masters Metal Effects Oxidizing Copper. And then you paint it with that. You let it dry. You put a second coat on. And while the second coat is wet, you go back and you spray it with this. The blue patina aging solution right that's those two go together 10 seconds see i only got this much left of the 10 second studio patina apply solution full strength with a brush or spray to the surface for a pure copper brass or verde paints let saturated area sit 48 hours additional coats desired for a blue green effect These other ones are all swell against. I'll try if I run out of that. Maybe I'll use some of that. This is the green gold. I wanted the one called Tiffany. Tiffany green. That's the bluer one, I think. Green gold. And this one's sky sapphire patina. This goes really blue. And the silver has a darkening patina that comes with it. That might actually be cool to put some... Well, I do that on the white corrugate, though. Eileen? See, you're hoarding the good stuff. Next time I come to Boca, I'm breaking in, baby. Um, all right, let's... See, this is almost too... The copper is, like, really strong copper color. Um... All right, let me shake these up a little bit and see what we got here. <laughs> You're welcome, Deborah. The Swell again, they have kits with different sets and stuff in them. They got a really, um, and it is, it's Swell again. Elegant with a swell in front of it. And she's got some good videos out on how to use the product. Um. Let me see what this does. <laughs> All right, what is this one? This one must be the brassy one. And I think that's what that one I really like is because it's 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 like a light gold underneath, not that real brash uh, copper color. Yeah, I think that's what that was. All right. Let me clean my finger. <coughs> All right. So this goes with this. All right. Am I zoomed out all the way? Yes. <coughs> Got a tickle. Hang on. Hey, 
Okie dokie. Um, and you know what? I'm going to cut this in half because it's going to be a little difficult. In my space here. Let's try this. Now let's do this one. Oh, I got to get away from my watercolor brushes. This is acrylic stuff. And I need one of these older ones. All right. Let me get this a little palette here. All right. Per your request, here we go. So I'm just painting this. I think this is the 10 second one that was a brass. I do believe they're not labeled. Um, that's almost gone. I'll do three rows of this. Or maybe more if I have it in here. Maybe I'll just go for it. But I don't have enough of this. That's why I can't do. I'll have more paint than I will the the solution. I could try some of the other brand of solution on what I run out of, though. That's what I need to be doing. Mixing toxic products. Yeah, what the hell. Let's just do it. Jean, I saw your picture with all your... Um, did you have like a yard sale or a garage sale? To uh, pare down your stuff for your move. I saw that. Oh, you know what? Dumbass. I got to put a second layer over this. <laughs> oh, geez, Louise. Okay, let's stop there to make sure I have enough. And I'm just going to blend. I'm going to use the same brush. I'm not even going to clean it. Can this process be done on canvas or does it take a smooth surface? I don't know that it would work on canvas. It probably would work, but I don't know if it would stay. Oh, good. Did you make uh, get some good traction on your getting rid of some stuff? Uh, I think with on canvas, just given the properties of the canvas that it's kind of pliable, I don't know. This one seems kind of watery. That's a pretty rose goldy color, though. Rosy. It's a ro more rosy copper than this orangey copper. If that makes sense. Ooh. And this, this actually dries pretty fast on this stuff because it's getting sucked up into the paper, right? It's not... Uh, So there's the first layer on. Oh, cool. Good for you. All right, I'm going to plug in the old heat gun and try to speed this along. And then I'll let it sit off to the side, and then we'll come back to it later. Once I put the acid on it, we'll come back later and, and see if you can see what's happening. It takes a while for it, the color to come up and develop. Yeah, which are you asking about, um, Debbie? Sorry, uh, I just assumed you meant this metal stuff on the canvas. Because that's me, I'm an assumer. Oh. I 
This is drying pretty fast, actually. Okay, now um, I am going to clean this brush out because I don't want to mess up this last bit of this brass paint that I have in case this was my precious one. <laughs> I wish I knew what purple paint I used on that, though. <laughs> Sounds like you have very accurate memories of that, Eileen. Scary. I'm getting a visual. Okay, back to the brass. Ugh. Layer two. And since this dries so much, I think I'm going to lay down some of the acid on this first bit while I know it's still wet. So, let us proceed. This, this is a sprayer, whether it's clogged or not, I do not know. I don't know. Holy crap, that's still working pretty good. All right, and then brass. Uh oh, give me some more. Let's go in here. Putting my fan on. Blow those little fumes away from my precious little head. The fan also makes it dry quicker, so it's, <laughs> it's uh, damned if you do and damned if you don't. Okay. Now, I turn my fan off while I spray this. All right. Fan back on. Um, put that one away. Get rid of most of that. Well, let me wash it. Oh, Darren, do you go to the Queen's Inc. too? All right. Second layer of copper. Watch the most interesting piece will probably be where these overlap. I forgot how, how quickly these dry compared to putting this stuff on polymer clay. I made some mermaid tails with that swell against stuff and some other little pieces uh, like a, a Zeus head that I had a mold of and like a scalloped design. Um, oh hell, which was that? That was 10 seconds. Oh, that's still the same stuff. Oh, okay. Just two different colors. All right. Okie dokie. Let me pick this up. You can see this turning a real pukey color already. Not so pretty color. Uh, looks a lot like baby poop at the moment. I'm going to sit this over here. Let it have its way with the paper. And remind me later to check that um, before I sign off. So, let's get this stuff out of the way. Oh, I didn't even, oh, did I want to do the swell again? Oh, you know what? Let's just, let's do some swell again since I got this mess out here. Let's do the brass. All right, hang on. Um, not yet, Patty Bell. Probably this next trip you have made it all sound irresistible. Yeah, it's a cool store. 
There's no doubt about that. And they have a website now, too. And they ship international, I believe. All right, let me get rid of this. I don't want to mix these up. Okay, this one goes in here. And then this is the brass swell again. Okay, so it, the process is pretty much the same. You use the um, one layer of the paint, let it dry, come back with a second layer, and um, while it's wet, put the, I guess it's an acid spray. I think, has anybody seen Xander on? I think she's streaming tonight. I'm just going to do this whole piece with this. Or do I want to make it another color? I don't know. You know how I like to change my mind and all that. I might do. I'm going to let this kind of mingle on this row here. And then I'm going to go. Oh, yeah, she made it to the creamer store in New York. Sandra did the other day. Remember the first time she went, they were closed for some unknown reason, unexpectedly. And, uh, she had to go back for an appointment and um, was able to get in there. Yeah, usual time is 7.30. Do you have to use a specific metallic paint for the patina effects? I think, hey, Bunny, I think you do. I think it actually has to have the metal in it so that it works. Uh and reacts properly. I do believe. I'm going to do some silver. And I'm not sure how it's going to come out over this corrugate. But it, the other's pretty opaque that it covered it. So I think this will too. Yeah, it looks like it's going to. And on this side, you do the darkening. It's a darkening spray. So it's just going to give it a you know, that uh, oxidized effect that you do on, when you uh, use that rotten egg smelling stuff on uh, jewelry, on silver. What's that called? Patina, I guess. I don't know. I can't, it's not coming to me. And I have, I have it sitting over on the jewelry side of the basement. <laughs> trying to get this on here pretty quickly. Yeah, and a lot of the places sell the paint and the acid as like a kit. So, I don't know. I mean, I have other gold metallic paints that are just acrylic paint. And like Dick Blick, but I don't know. Dick Blick. What the hell am I saying? Uh, Goldens. All right. Now, be gone.
doesn't really say on this label, maybe on the box it would have some more information. I'm sure you can see it on the website. Christy Friesen is the the girl's name, the artist that has this product line. And she's got really good tutorials. What is the corrugation running on them? What is the corrugation running on them? Pick your painting. Uh, do you mean, like, what's this? That corrugate? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, who said that? Deborah? Yeah, Deborah. already has my brush loaded. I'm just going to start on the silver side. I'm going to turn my fan off so it doesn't dry this too quickly. And this, since the first kind of soaked into that paper, the second one does stay a little more moist longer because it's laying on that first layer of acrylic. And you can see I'm using less out of the bottle this time because of that same very reason. All right, use that up just pre exactly right. Get out of there. Okay, now this is the silver one. Where the hell did it go? The darkening patina. This one's called darkening patina, right? So, and this doesn't have a spray. Arr, 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 arr. Let me put some, whoops. Well, you know what? Maybe I can just ugh, grab another brush. And I think this is what I did before, but I'm going to try to brush it lightly with the grooves here. Well, that's already changing. I want some of that silver to show through. I'm getting a lot of, I don't know if that's the paper being eaten up on there. Ooh, I need to put on the, put on the fan. That's kind of thinky. And then on here I want the Tiffany Green, it's called. I'll just put it on the same way. Ah! Thank you, Jan. Look at you. I didn't even see you sneak in and here you're giving me the information I'm looking for. I'll look at that later. See what I, I use Ultra. Oh, see that makes sense. Oh, I bet that's Snapdragon then. I bet I brayered Snapdragon over top of that. <laughs> I thought that was one of the videos I had to take down. Uh, long story. It's asinine if you ask me, but that's just my opinion. I'm trying to help promote somebody that backfired. Can't always be the nice guy. Patty, I tried some UFO paper in the crimper. It doesn't corrugate. Okay. Yeah, that's what I figured. That's pretty sturdy stuff. You have a hard time trying to tear that stuff. Oh, you know what I should try? 
I'm using all the uh, all the Yupo, but I wonder how that Terra skin would work with the watercolors. I'm sure it's very similarly. But that is even, oh man, look at all that I wasted. That's not good. Can I get that back up in here? Watch me make this. Oh, and I'm going to contaminate it with the silver now. Yay! Ain't that special? Oh, well. What's the worst that can happen? Get that in there. Get rid of this. Terra Skin is another Yupo-like paper, but it's actually made out of rocks. Which, every time I say that out loud, it sounds like I'm crazy. But actually, it is. Hang on, let me get this stuff out of the way. I'll, I'll show you. <laughs> Patty, you could always promote me on my YouTube channel if you wanted. That is for attention. Put your link up there, girlfriend. I'm happy you do this for Jamie. All right. Over here somewhere and do something, even if it's wrong. Now, here's the first one we did, and you can see a little more greenish yellow starting to come up in that. Still a little baby poopish, but it's, it's getting there. Right? It's going to take a while. So, Okay, off with the fan. Blowing all my shit around here. Uh, so here, this is Terra Skin. And does it say where? It's rock paper. <laughs> rock paper. Scissors. Rock paper scissors. There you go. I got this on Amazon. And I might have got some of this at the Blix store. But here's a piece I was trying to show at one point. I was cutting it. And it cuts. And then once you tear it, once you cut it, you can tear it. But if you just try to tear it like this, you can finally tear it. But it does. Oh, shit. This tears easier than the Yupo. But it it's like stretches and gets like that. Right? But it's got the same non-porous kind of surface, but it's much floppier. Is that, is that a word? Subscribe today. Watch after Patty. Oh. <laughs> there you go. There's Jamie's uh, link to her channel. Um, so, let's see. Can I show you? Yeah. So here's here's a piece of Yupo. And Here's a piece of tear skin. Now this I can catch and make it lay flat. This I can, but it's it's starting to crinkle. It's it's really different. It feels it's still slick and non-porous, but the feel is different. Cross grain is easier to read. Cross grain is easier to read. I must have missed something. That's a, I don't know what you mean by that, Dad. Oh, you mean the way I tore it? Oh, maybe so. Maybe I went the wrong, the easy way. But I'm going to throw... Let me get this stuff out of my way. Let's throw some... Let's throw some watercolors on here and see what happens. I'm going to do this with my coppery color in mind. But do I have a real coppery? Oh, you know what? That one right there. I bet that would work. This is one of the um, cloves and honey 
the last the last um what do they call it they're limited edition sets i showed you guys it had the doctor girlfriend this hot pink this gold, this treasure, sunken treasure, and a purple, purple rain metallic. Um, but that might be about, oh, and what's this? Oh, that's that duo auto mystery. That might work, too. Huh, okay. Let's move this damn bottle. Let's get them juiced up a little bit. And... I think some of the glitter bronze over here. So what did that look like again? Let me have a little look-see. Here it is. All right, this is what I'm trying to match colors with. We'll see how that works. Where's my brush that I want? All right. Um, well, look at there. I'm going to be forced into using my same colors. <laughs> I'm going to keep this, the purple, maybe out of this one. So this is on Terra Skin. It's looking real similar to how the um, uh, Yupo acts. All right, this is one of the cloves and honey. Oh, but see where it gave me that hard line where it already dried on there? See the turquoise underneath of that it has that hard edge? Where it would have stayed wet and still moving. Let me bring you in so you can see that. That's a problem. I don't like that. See that hard edge underneath that turquoise where I'm moving that? Can you see it? You're just going to have to trust me. It's there. See those peaks? That already dried and that's not, that's not doing much at all. Let's do some of this duochrome down here. And let's do some of this greenish blue. Yeah, these are acting really different on here. Very, very, very different. Um, where's that other gold I was going to use? This one here. Nope, that already dried. This is crappy. Crappity crap crap. No likey. Let's see if it's just, uh, looks like the metallics don't dry as quickly. Uh, I'll just come back and show you these sharp edges as the, um, mm -mm. these aren't doing my thing. Let's try dioxazine purple that I said I wasn't going to put in here, but I want to see if it acts the same way as it does. Now that's moving into the turquoise pretty pretty good. Oops, you're in too close now. Gotta back you out a little bit. Katie, hey! Haven't seen you for a while. Welcome. Yeah, this not like in this. No, I'm not. Um, this is the Amazonite. And see that purple? That's already dried there. 
yeah, that's not gonna, that's not gonna work. I'm not even gonna waste any more pigment on that. The only thing that looks cool is this right here. But everything else, see the, the turquoise underneath of that, where it didn't blend at all with this coppery color? And the purple that I just did, see that hard edge dried right there and it's not moving and mingling. So, bye bye, tear skin. Back to my Yupo. So, let me go do the Yupo real quick to let you see what the difference is because there is a big difference. You must trust me. You simply must. Okay, let's um, I don't even know what that is, but we're going to throw some in there. Oh, maybe a little bit of that brown. That was kind of cool. And then some of the oh, maybe even that burnt bronzite. That might be a good one to use. Where the heck was that? There we go. Let's get some of this puddled up. That might be a good copper-ish kind of color. Oop, what happened to my focus? Focus. What's happening? There we are. Lordy. Is that just me? Does alcohol wink? Uh, yeah, I think alcohol ink will work on either one, Eileen. All right, um, what was I doing? Burnt bronzite, squirrel. Get some of that going. That might blend in with this coppery bit up here too. All right, so. All right. Um, this is Juniper Green. Now what the hell is that doing? Look at that. Completely resisted. There must be something on this. Look at that. Well, that's a hell of a note. Is both sides like that? Does that matter? Is there a right or a wrong? Looks like there's something on there. There's some paper towel. some of this on there and see what happens. See how that just goes in and mixes because that turquoise is still wet on the Yupo? There must have been something that was on that back side of that uh, that UFO paper. Yeah, I will. I, I was going to wipe it down. Um, I just want to test this side. Now I'm off and running on this. This is the glitter bronze creamer. I'm going to put some of this forget the name of this one. See that little bit of turquoise in there pushing back again already. Um, that's really, that bronzite's really breaking up. 
let's put a little of this brown in here. So that's all like, ew, 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 ew. That's all. I don't know if you can see it. Now it just blended in, but it's like hard pigment pieces mixed up in there. That was unpleasant. Let me try to get a little piece where it's kind of liquidy here and not so much the hmm not looking like I had him a little head I wanted it to look quite honestly Cascade green in there. Have I lost my touch? These don't look near as nice as they usually look to me. I don't know. Oh my goodness. Well, you know what I haven't used much of is the the creamer pigments. Where's my lunar blue? Let's get some of that in there. That usually kind of makes things interesting. Wow, some of these just almost disappear in this Yupo. Almost disappear. Um, yeah, this isn't not my favorite little boring I gotta tell you but I'm gonna do I'm gonna throw some of this out there and then I'm gonna go back and spray it a little bit there's some interesting stuff going on over here but not much so this saddle brown uh, radiant watercolor by P.H. Martin. That does some neat stuff. You can see here where that's pulling up crazy like into that turquoise. That did that on my other piece too when I used it. And that, that natural, the one I mounted. Um, so when it doesn't look so good, I found that if I just go in here and hit it with a little bit of water, these pigment, they start moving again on the uh, I don't like that corner at all. That's rather boring. And that's... There's something on there. If you usually if you scrub your brush, you can get it out. Whatever that was. Let's get some of this in there, too. Oh, look. The, it mixed with the turquoise and gave me a green metallic coming out here. Now, Patty, are you, you are never boring. Here's your paint. Maybe less exciting, but not boring. <laughs> Thanks, Jean. Um, yeah, this right here. Something. We need to do something in there. And I'm just going to put more 
Let's cascade green. I'm just going to add more to it. Ooh, look at that takeover. Wow. That's going a little cray cray. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Hi, Orla. What was that? That looks pretty cool right there, actually. Let me see if I can lift this up. Hey, Kimberly. Look what's happening over here with that cascade green going a little crazy and back up into the saddle brown, and it's there's a purple coming out of somewhere. That's pretty interesting. But look where that cascade green just kind of made a, a puddle. This was that Autumn Duo Mist. Autumn Duo, what the hell is that called? Autumn Mystery by Daniel Smith. Let's put a little bit of that in there to break that up a little bit. All right, let's see what happens to that. Most likely nothing good. All right, where the hell did I... Oh, it's sitting on my... That's why it's bending up. That's why I got the hump in it. The hump? Because of my paper, I had it sitting on this curled. I'm going to go sit this on something flat and see what happens. I don't know. Not a big fan. Not a big fan. Little fan, not a big fan. Oh. So here is this piece. It's still in that stage. It's starting to dry a little bit on the fringes, and then you can kind of see Sort of what that's going to look like. But I think I'm going to um, where are my other 9 by 12 pieces? Maybe I'll plop something on a They're under here. Hang on. That's thanks, CC. So these are the big ones again. That rose gold in there. You can't hate it, people. You can try, but there ain't no way you're gonna be hating on that. If you are, please block my channel from your existence. All right, here's some. That's not what I'm looking for. I keep hitting the lamp switch with the edge of these papers that are stacked up here. That's what the strobe is you're seeing. All right, let me grab these. Oh. Somebody asked me to do one for them, the 12 by 12. I'm going to have to send her pictures of some of these and see if any of these grab her before I do that. But they're the size that she wanted. That 
one's kind of weird looking. It's kind of cool, but it's kind of... They're just experiments that went awry. All right. But do I want to... I want to melt so Oh, I was going to do one in black with black on it, wasn't I? See, you let me forget. Um, and I needed to do it in 9 by 12. That's what I started to do because I got this ink here and all that stuff. Where's that brush I used for that before? Right here. So, um, she wanted what she called peacock colors, which I think they're my colors, right? Purples and turquoises and greens. Would you not agree? Um, so what I'm not sure of is if I did the watercolors first and then dropped some black in, would it stay as black? I do not know, but there's one way to find out, isn't there? Yeah, uh uh. Mad scientist, here we come. Okay, now I don't know which was violet and which was. Amethyst. Huh, I still don't know. I think this was this one. And I think this was the Peerless Amethyst. Oh, you know what else I think I might do? I'll tell you what I think I might do. Uh, Black, cyclamine. Um, maybe some of this, the inks that I mixed up with the primary elements, remember those? Maybe I'll drop some of those in here too. So I used African Jade in the Bombay ink that's called Teal. And I used uh, some of the Dioxazine Purple uh, Liquitex ink. I also put some African Jade in there. You can never go wrong with some African Jade. I'm just saying. So, um, I know I want some Lagoon. And I know I want some Rose Gold. And let me get some black out here ready. <laughs> I don't know if I'm an idea machine or my mind just runs amok most of the time. But I, I do want to get some more black in these. I think that really, you know, when I'm, when I'm doing these and um, I don't know what they're going to be used for. If I cut up bits of them, you know, to use for, God forbid, I would make a card or whatever. Um, I mean, I'm sure this mounted would look pretty, right? I mean, how can that not look pretty? But um, I think with a little black in there, let me give you that little papa. Both of those look yummy. Thank you. Oh yeah, I'm burning on all cylinders today, let me tell you. So I'm going to do watercolor and ink and then come back and drop some of this Dalarani, Dalar, Dalarani acrylic black ink. In amongst the watercolors and the inks. Okay, are we ready? Hold on to your shorts. Here we go. This is Juniper Green, Doc Martin's Radiant. See, that's going on that piece of Yuko just fine. I don't know what the hell is wrong with the other one. I do not know. And all those brush marks will all go bye bye. This is the uh, Amethyst Peerless. 
look how this green, I mean the brown, the saddle brown radiant. Look how that green line came out of there when it was drying in my paper towel. And that's called saddle brown. It's a nice chocolate brown. Um, oh God, I have no idea, Katie. I just did it till it looked like I liked it. <laughs> I know that's not much help. I'm not very much help usually. But, um, yeah, I don't remember. So this is some rose gold. This is so stinking yummy. Let it go right down that dividing line there and do some, do some magic. Do something magical with yourself. Okay, let me, let me drop a little bit more of that in there. Okay, and just let it do something. So now, um, let me take some of this teal. And it separates pretty, you got to always be shaking these. But I don't know. I had, you know, the bottle's almost full. I probably maybe put a half a teaspoon in it. I don't know. Um, so let's just put some of that. Whoa, look at that taken over there. Let me get you zoomed in. You don't want to miss it. Probably too dark. Um, let me get my acrylic brush out here, and I'm just gonna blend that in here and there. Wow! <laughs> I cannot wait till Leslie comes out with these watercolors made out of the the, the twinkling H two O. Um, pigments. Oh, man. Oh, you should see what's happening up there. Where the hell's my paper? I usually carry it on. What'd I do with that? Darn it. How could I have lost a piece of paper that big? Well, is it possible? <laughs> is it even possible? I don't think it is. This lamp driving me nuts. Okay, let me get another piece. Oops, not that one. I have another sacrificial piece of paper. Where in the hell did that go? It must be with my 12 by 12 craft corgan. <laughs> there is some crazy stuff going on right now, people. I can't turn it because it's going to slide. I don't want it to slide. But look what that ink did. And can you see the shimmer in that ink? You can't right now, but you will. Holy macaroni. Okay, so I need to get some black around here. So let's, let me, well, let's just do it, shall we? Before everything gets too dried. Pretty sure this is the black that stayed black. Let's just flick a little in there, shall we? Hey, Tapia. All right. Um, let's. Uh, <laughs> I think we should put more of this purple, but which one did I use? I don't know. We'll try this one. Oh, see a fingerprint's on there. Is that going to resist and be a pain in my tuchus? Wow, look at that crazy taking over. Oh, wow, that turquoise is coming under the black and through there. Yumminess. That's 
gonna tick me off. Let me try baby wipe. See if I can get that fingerprint out of there. I should probably just make it a, a thing where I wipe the Yupo down. Um, of course, then I'm gonna get another fingerprint on it trying to take care of this fingerprint. Let's see if that works. And now let's get some of this back in there. Ah! All right, let's just keep going, shall we? Maybe if I put some black in there, will that cover that up? Will that sit on that? All right, let us go back to never have enough space. Come on. Work with me. Let's go back and grab some. Um, let me pull you back out a little bit because you can't really see what's going on. It's too dark. Oh, I went and got this. So I could show you. I wish those colors would show up the true color. That's so much more green than what you're seeing in there. I'll have to put stills out on Instagram later for you guys. So you can see the real magic. So let's go back to Mr. Juniper. Right in here. Ooh. Give me some more rose gold. Oops, contaminating the rose gold. Yikes. Yeah, these are a little crazy colors, Joan. Yeah, I like it, but it's a little crazy. I'm going to get a fairly big streak of that rose gold in there. Let that do some cool stuff. Now let's try this purple. That's a different purple. This is the Radiant Violet. This right here is really cool. Really cool. Now let's try some of this. Ugh. This is really stunning down here. I'm not going to put as much down there. I'm going to use this brush to get that going. Is that going to show me any of that? Uh, what was that African Jade? I don't know. If it doesn't do it on its own, I'm going to make it do it. Um, you know what? Let's hit a little bit more of this. This is quite peacocky. <laughs> is that a word? Let's get a little more black down here around this edge. Let's go up like that. And now let's get this scattered in here. All right. 
right. What do I need? What do I need? What do I need? This right in the middle here. Oh, oh mama. You should see that. Oh, that's that rose gold. Pushing that stuff around. Hang on. We're going to get some more of that. Let's put some of you. Oh, wow. Look at that. Let's drop some of you right down this row of black here. Crazy, I bet. Oh, I wonder what some of that dry pigment in black ink would look like. Oh. My brain will run amok. Hang on, I want more of that to show us the rose gold. And I think a couple little. That's all. That's all. That's all of that. That's all. Wow. <laughs> Hang on. I'm so easily entertained. So easily entertained. That's drying. How I'm not really wild about it. So we'll make that move again. There's not a whole lot on here that isn't really a wow. So this might just be her peacock color she wanted. Um, let me try to show this to you guys up closer. And I can't, I'm not going to turn it because I don't want it to run more than it's running because it's doing right in through here. When you guys see that shimmer that's going to show on there. And look at that purple with that breaking out of the hot pink and flipping in through that ink. And down and through here. And how that bled through that black. This looks like coral down here. Not color, but sea coral. That, and of course, not put my freaking thumb in there. Got a little thumbprint. little piece of patty with it. And th this is so organic that even if you screw it up like that, you just add a little water and let them move again. <laughs> okay, let's set you in a very safe place, my friend. Oops, I see a little fluck of white. Well, there's a little hole up there. I don't want that to be there. There we go. All right. Oh, look at you, lover. All right, I'm going to have to do another one. I have to do another one. Just like that. So I have a pair I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to mount this for her. So this is the commission thing I'm trying to do. Thanks, Joan. It's not my fault she likes peacock. How did Patty, Patty get the black? It's um, the Dale Rowney FW Black acrylic ink that I'm mixing in with the watercolors. That's the only thing, that's the only black medium I've been able to keep black on Yupo. Hey, Kathy. Uh, it's, um, hey, Sandy. Everything else, the black watercolor, whether it's the PH Martin Radiant Liquid Black, the Creamer Black, Pans, uh, any Daniel Smith Blacks, they all have gone a little cray-cray on me, but that's the only thing that stays black, black. All right, let's try to, well, we're going to do the same colors. 
Uh, let's start with purple instead. Look at me getting out of the box. <laughs> instead of going turquoise and purple, I'm going to go purple and turquoise. I'm a maniac. I know. Hey, Lynn. All right, let's do a little bit of this. I know Eileen loves this. Love how I switch it up, don't you, Eileen? And this is Juniper Green. These, when these go together, they make a stunning turquoisey color. I mean, it's quite the stunner, gotta tell you. So, I don't know if this, I'm going to put a little bit of this down here and see if what this looks like on here. This is acrylic ink that I added some primary elements to, some, some uh, African jade. I see it in there now. I see you. Let's get this down there. Oh, that's kind of taken in that turquoise pretty cool. Wow. Yes. Hello, lover. <sighs> okay. Give me some rose gold, baby. You know it's going to happen. I just love how these pigments get pushed and pulled. It's crazy. Look at those legs coming through there. Look at the gams on this, will you? It. Hmm, that's kind of dark to put black next to it. Maybe I'll do a little more gold on this side. That dried a little bit right there, actually. And now. Let's get some of this black in there. I'm going to put it down here first. All right, now let's see what happens here. When I connect the two puddles, hmm, not much actually this time for some reason. I don't like that big blob of black. Gonna have to do something drastic. Going in for the teal ink. Get my acrylic brush. Mm -mm. This one's going awry. I don't know why. Why are you going awry? Get something else to bust up that black a little bit. Hmm. Oh, you know what I didn't put in the other one was Lagoon. How dare me. Uh, I'm going to get the other purple in here now. And let that do something with this teal. It's going to go out this way instead of going the same direction. Maybe that'll mix it up a little bit. Um, oh, hell, I used that. Didn't use my watercolor brush. Um, 
Hmm. Well, that's not what I wanted. Well, don't want to waste it either. Let's just throw some of that up there. Um, That juniper green that was in there. I want some more of this in here. That does some cool things. And then juniper green. This, not liking this here. Hmm. I don't know. Not, uh, Oh, I don't want to use that brush though. I have a dagger watercolor brush, but I don't want to drag that through the ink. Maybe I'll just have to use this. I wonder what would happen if I just kind of flick some up through here. And let that kind of re-wet and do something else. Back away from the flicking. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to drop. This played well with the black before. I'm going to drop some of this in. Right down the middle here. Let's see what happens with this. Oops, it's, my, my squeezy's not working so good. God forbid I'm running low. This one's going to take till next Sunday to dry. I got to pop out my. Oh shit, wrong brush. Oop, I said shit again. Ah. Let that go on the record. I'm trying to mash up these bubbles. How rude. Well, here's an experiment of what not to do. Excuse my finger. Do it the old fashioned way. Um, actually, <laughs> it doesn't look half bad right now. Um, you can't really see, well, a little bit, but you, that's not what it looks like in person. You won't have to trust me on that. I'm going to put this away. Oops, I almost dropped the whole damn thing. Oh, now I said damn. <laughs> I should have a quarter jar every time I say a bad word, but I have to put a quarter in the jar. Be rich. Rich, I tell you. Rich. All right. Um, let's see what time it is. This is still drying from the edge down. See more of it's drying up there. You can see the wet edge there where it's coming in from the edges. Oh, that's where my piece of paper was. I was carrying stuff. It was underneath of that. I knew it would turn up sooner or later. Okay, so I wanted to mount something. That sounds bad. <laughs> what time is it? Three o'clock. 
I know that pisses people off when I tap my fingers when I think, but that's just how I think. So, um, what am I going to do? Uh, 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 uh. I think. Try spraying it with an alcohol mister. I don't really like that effect though, well enough. I've, I've done that before. It just kind of moves everything out. And, and I, I like it more when it kind of mingles. Um, I have done that. Bojo Row! I was looking at my screen. Something looked a little funny there. Can you guys see and hear me okay still? Hello. Um, what do I want to mount? And on what piece? Should I do something like this? With one of these? How big is this? Oh, look, that gives me a wide space right down here for some cardboard. That little bit right there looks kind of cool. But that looks kind of cool, too. Do I go this way and try to get that bit through there? Maybe that's what I'll do. Oh, okay, thanks, CC. I see on the bottom of my um, the window where I'm watching the same way where like you guys are watching, so I can see the chat. It's got a black and gray scroll bar kind of twisting around the the bottom of the uh, window that I don't usually see. Okay, we'll have to assume that we're good. So, how big is this? Six. Oh, you know what? Did I spray this one yet? I don't think I did. So between three and nine would be six. That's got some pretty cool pieces to it if I do that. So how much is this? This is 11. So I would have to take... That's 11. This is 6. I have to take 2.5 off of each side, right? To get my 6. And then what am I going to frame it with? With cardboard. That's just wrong. No, 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 no. Where's my, uh, Oh, there it is. This is the um, the one that's got the lagoon on it. It doesn't look that great on camera, but it looks pretty cool in person because I really see the purple. And it won't pick that up. Ah! All right, what's that look like? Because this, what's on here is this flashy... Uh, the Pacific Lagoon color. That flashy turquoise. Or, or, do I go with the rose gold? Where the hell are you? 
just the rose gold. Oh, wait a minute. I have this thing too close. So, this or this on the end. That's not a very good contrast because you can't see it because it doesn't fit. Okay, so let's let's measure. What do we have to do? I'm going to cut a piece up. So 18 inches. This is um, eleven by fourteen. All right, twelve. Is that right? Yeah, eleven by fourteen. So it's 14 long. This is 18. That's four. So two inches of either one of these. All right. Let's just do some dry fitting here and see what we got. Where the hell's my paper cutter? Oh, it's over here. Oop, now I said hell. <laughs> oh, mercy. I can't be trusted. So two inches. And I like it to go this way. And it's six, right? Make it a little shy. So if I put that there, or, oh, I don't know, maybe a piece of that. Maybe not. Uh, what did I say? Two, right? And then six, and a little shy of six, and a slice of that down the middle. And I'm gonna I'm gonna cut off a piece of this too, Patty. How did you color the? Cur I just painted it with watercolors. These are um, this is with that uh, the creamer pigments. Uh, a couple different Indian Magic Indian Summer and some rose gold that I mix myself. And this is with the Pacific Lagoon pigment, so it flashes purple and turquoise. But they're just, here's a solid rose gold one. They're just painted. And then some of these I took, um, I patinaed them with uh, the metal paint and acid. See the copper paint underneath? And then I brayered purple over top so it only caught the ridges. That may be the way to go with that, actually. Huh. So many options. This. I don't know. It's kind of too much alike. However, um, it's. Uh, let me just square this up. wasn't good. That's better. Um, squirrel. Can't think while I'm trying to do something here. Patty, I have watched you so often and love reviewing your stream, but this one is absolutely one of the very best and beautiful things. Which are oh, thanks, Darren. Thank you, thank you. Some of these women consider me an enabler. But if they can't control themselves, that's their own problem. <laughs> if that one's not straight, let's go here. Let's take this two inches. Just kind of thinking out loud, you know? And let's take this, whoop, this six with the purple showing. All right, we'll try some of that. We'll just... See, you know what? I might as well just cut this sucker up. Oh, but I didn't spray it yet. Damn it. I don't want to handle it too much without having sprayed it. But I think to just glue it down should be okay, right? Isn't that what we say? Sure. So, of course, this isn't going to fit on here because it's a skosh too long. Um... And I want the middle 
six. The middle, six. All right, so I need two and a half. I'll just try this. I'll just take two and a half off of here. As far down as I can get it. Hang on to your hat, people. Here we go. And of course, it doesn't cut all the way. But that's okay. That I can cut with my scissors, I think. Oh, do I dare? Oh, what the hell? There's a very pretty bookmark. <laughs> Okay, and I want to take just a skosh off of there. Get rid of that white. There we go. And then I need to take two and a half off of here. Is that right? Don't let me screw up. Eight and a half. Yep, two and a half off of there. Another lovely bookmark. All right, here we go. Here goes nothing, people. All right, let me open this up. I'm not going to paint this until I dry fit it, and I want to think about the, how I'm going to paint the edges. The one I did for myself, I did in black. And actually this one, I did this one in black too. But then I thought, oh, I wonder if I could use some of my Lindy's sprays and just, I don't know if you remember that one long panel I made for myself that had the corrugate and the um, Tyvek melted. You remember that one? Um, But that one, I just kind of let the colors drip around the sides. But that was acrylic, and I'm using watercolor. I think I better just stick with the black. Stick with the black. Okay. Here's some lovely scraps. And now, let's see what we would have here if we did this. And it's still a skosh big. I'm going to have to go back and cut that again. So here's with just the rose gold. And that picks up all the rose gold bits in there. I'm not going to be able to hold this up to show it that much. Yeah, I don't think that one does much for it. It's kind of too alike. And this, can I get it to catch the color so you can actually see? But it's the same as the rose gold in the picture. Probably not. So this is the lagoon that's actually used in the painting. Wait a minute. i got to turn this so I can see it myself. And then I'll share it with you. Actually, that's not bad. And the rose gold. That or the rose gold? Because here I can see the purple and the turquoise in that. I don't know. The rose gold is kind of different. You guys have an opinion? Not that I'm going to listen to you. I'm just curious. <laughs> what do you think? Or do we want a little hunkaroo of this in there? I don't know. 
for some reason, I'm kind of liking the rose gold. I don't know what that reason is. There's one for rose gold. Hey, Sandy. Another one for rose gold. I gotta get a little edge of that cut off of there yet. Just a skosh. Which side do I want to take? I have to take this side because that's the side that's crooked. This UFO cuts, you get the inside of that plastic and it kind of gets a little, watch me screw up and take a bite out of this. Prepare for me to say more than shit if I do that. Oh, brace yourself, Effie. Oh, oh no pun intended. Oh, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I think I'm gonna go rose gold. Get all this stuff out of my way. Almost said it again. Almost. These make cute little bits or something. I don't know. I don't know what that something might be, but something. So I need another one that's two by six. Five, six. All right. All right, all right, all right. Let's see where we are. All right, I think that's what we're going to do. Very shiny if you hit it right. The corrugate, I mean. So, that's what we're going to do. I've made an executive decision. But now, i got to hit this bad boy with a little gesso. Let me get my brush that I used yesterday. Just so if I can. Ugh, lordy. Hang on, you're going to be a big bang. Yeah, I think the rose gold kind of softens it up. And then the edges are going to be black. Um, and I got a mess going here, let me tell you. Murphy's oil soap works great on the jelly plate. I saw you guys talking about the jelly plate. Somebody said something about alcohol. I um I wouldn't put alcohol on it. I don't think you're supposed to do that. Just regular old dish soap and water or baby wipes. But you know what? You can use Purell. And that's got alcohol in it. So maybe you can. What the hell do I know? I just keep my mouth shut. Mind your own business. I'm talking to myself when I say that. Don't email me. All 
All right. I love black gesso. It's so stark. Oh, black. I don't like to leave my brush marks short. I think I'll just, I don't know. I think I'll just gesso the whole thing in case anything doesn't fit just right. The bare wood won't be exposed. I've got to get some more of these wood, uh, cradle wood deals. I have some, but they're gesso board, and I don't want to cover up the gesso board just to glue on top of it, because they're not, you know, I can get these cheaper with just the, um, oh, great, uh, you know, just the frame, just the wood, instead of the, um, gesso board. I lost my train of thought. I thought I heard the pups coming down and realized I closed the door when I came down. So this is kind of unnecessary, I guess, to coat the whole thing with gesso, but if any little edge is short or off or something, it'll help disguise it, but I think I cut it pretty precisely. Uh -huh. Get that in the water. Mojo and Babe are doing really good. They're really good. And Mojo's already beaten the odds, so every day we have him, that's a blessing. Okay, he's gone. Uh, Murphy's oil soap is a good thing for those who wash their stencils. Um, even if they're really coated up with thick paint, if you soak them in a basin or a tub of Murphy's oil soap in hot water and come back, it peels off like butter. Sandra did a stream some time ago showing that. Darren, are you saying Murphy's oil soap is hard for you to find in the U.S.? I've always seen it like in every grocery store we have or Walmart. I've never, it's pretty well used and known here. Uh, maybe I misread what you said. Not quite. He 
gun? Has, has anybody heard from Paula? I haven't seen her tweet for a while, and I, I don't know when the last time she was that she streamed. And I haven't seen Anne join today. I hope she's doing okay. All right. Okie dokie. Now. All right. Let's see where we are. How the hell can that still be a hair too big? Just a hair. Or is it me? It might be me. It might just be this little part down here that wouldn't fit. Oh, good. That's good, Jean. Did she ever get her hands taken care of? With the carpal tunnel. That's just a tad over there. All right. That's still a little schmutz. Too big. Tag on it. Ah. And I mean just a schmutz. That's a very finite... Uh, measurement for those of you who might not be aware of that maybe I should try to cut this oh I'll never line that up no oh, thank you not the way to go there All right. Patty, you can really turn these out. You're made of good old Christ, I'm high on SD. <laughs> no, I've only ever made two of them, Deborah. So I, no, I don't, I don't use yarn much in anything that I do. So it never really occurs to me to reach for any yarn. I don't know. Well, I don't have any. But uh, I mean, you could do all kind of things, I guess. With you could put, you know, our little row of beads in there, or um... all right, less talking and more gluing. Here we go. Uh, using matte medium. Mm 
Okay. Hang on to your hat, people. Here goes nothing. I'm anxious to see what those two I painted today, how they dry. Jean isn't wearing a hat. Do you suggest she grabs instead? I have no idea what you people are talking about. <laughs> Jean's wearing a hat? That must be an inside joke that I missed. This went to curl up on me yesterday, so I'm going to hold this in place for a few minutes. Yeah, I'm getting pretty hungry myself. I had breakfast this morning, but that was, oops, and I'm scooching it around. Hello, pay attention. Don't be screwing yourself up. You can only put so much pressure on this, too, or you'll collapse the corrugate humps. We will try not to collapse any humps. Oh, okay, Sophia. I missed that part about she was wearing a hat when I said, hold on to your hat. <laughs> All right. Piece number two. Lord, I buried my whole brush in there. Take your time, sister. Patty, are you going to Remy neck now? No Remy money in the budge this year. We've been bleeding money lately with all sorts of repairs and stuff that have all happened and come due at the same time. So... No money for traveling and fun at the time. But um, I'm hope Carol, are, Caroline, are you going again to Remy? All right. I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on the back of this. Maybe a little extra. Okay. No, uh, Deborah, they, they always tell you when you want to talk to the streamer to put it in caps so that it pops out to us a little bit better while we're trying to multitask and watch the chat and do the art and all that kind of stuff at the same time. If you put it in all caps, that is helpful. Oh, 
Oh, you've been to Ocracoke then. Ocracoke. I don't want to go back to Ocracoke. Caroline, I know you loved Ocracoke when you were there. I'm going to try to do Ocracoke next time that I do it. I've spent a lot of time in the Outer Banks in my previous life. And that was the first time when I went in 14 that I had been back for, God, 10 years, maybe longer. I don't remember. But um, probably longer than that, actually. Oops, don't drop it on the picture. Right. This is so uh, I don't know what word it is. It's moving around a lot. Whatever word you want to put to that. Previous life. Wonder what Patty wonder what Patty was in a previous life. Golden retriever. Pole dancer. Well, you found me out. I did I've done art and soul about four or five times in Virginia Beach probably four. Um, had a bad experience with one of the instructors the last time. Uh, bad enough that I wrote a letter, which I've never done in my life before, and put a bad taste in my mouth and haven't been back yet. Yeah, but there it wasn't nothing with art and soul. It was just the one teacher, but it was four classes I had with her. Royal bitch, if I must say. And uh, will not ever send her a nickel of my money. Really a nasty ass person. Yeah, when I say a previous life in Ocracoke, I'm talking about when my ex-husband and I had a sport fishing boat we kept in Hatteras, which is just the ferry ride across the inlet from Ocracoke and spent a lot of time on Ocracoke too. But we used to um, go fishing in the Gulf Stream and uh, scuba dive on the shipwrecks. That's my previous life down there. Well, oh, see that little bit? And I think my hand's steady. I don't know why. I should never think my hand is steady. Because it's not. But I'm trying. Every time I turn my head, I feel it move a little bit. Actually, I was almost a captain. <laughs> I took all the training to become a licensed captain. My ex-husband traveled all the time, and we wanted to take out divers for charters. And um, I was home all the time, and he was gone all the time. So he said, why don't you take the course, and you get certified. It doesn't matter which one of us is licensed. Uh, and I did all the uh, courses, and... Um, Ended up studied so long and was ace and everything. And back then, I had so many of the captains say they're gonna try to chew you up and spit you out for a woman going to do that. That back in that day. Um, so I thought I'll study, so I'll ace it, and they can kiss my butt. Um, but then we moved to Fredericksburg from Baltimore and had a bunch of stuff going on, and I just got out of the studying habit and. And ended up never going back to take the test, which I'm glad we didn't charter because that was a pain in the neck just sometimes taking out some friends that didn't really respect the boat or, you know, would drink too much or something. And we had to get a little pickier with how we did that later. But 
I think if you take paying customers out and they'll, you know, it becomes a job then. So I'm, I'm glad we never really did it. To be honest. I know this is boring on YouTube. You may race ahead if you'd like. 346. That is almost perfect timing. For my three hours. All right. I think that might have it. I'm going to put this in the water. Put the lid on this. And I have to spray this whole thing, but I'm not going to do that in here. Yeah, I was I, I was going to classes with this one. Um, at the time, he was older than me, probably my age now. Um, one of the bosses I worked with in a previous job, he had a sailboat, and he wanted to get his captain's license. So when he found out that I was um, going, he said to me, I'm going to go too. I want, I want to get my license. Okay, so we went to all these classes together. <laughs> Every time I would ace a test and he wouldn't, he'd get so ticked off. But um, I remember one time they were quizzing us on questions about diesel engines. They just happened to ask the only three questions I knew the answers to. How do you stop a runaway diesel? How's the diesel? How does the diesel engine run? How does it propel? What's the power? And uh, what else was it? I don't remember. But they said, "How do you you know how do you kill a runaway diesel?" So, well, you got to either shut off the fuel or the air. And he looked. <laughs> I got answered all three. He said, "How the hell did you know that?" Mm -hmm. My dad's friend's a diesel mechanic. I paid attention. Okay, so here, now you can see that where I can manipulate it. You can see that catch the the shine on that corrugate. That looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Get those little fingers of that color mixing down there. There's that lagoon and the rose gold. Trying to get that hit the light right. Right, so there you go. All right, I'm going to go spray that bad boy and now uh, when everything dries up, I'll show you. I'll, I'll post some stills on uh, Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Um, what else? Let me see where my dried cor oh, my piece over here. I put the oh, are these too dry yet? Wow, that's still got a big puddle on it. Um, I'm not sure what was... Oh, crap. Lord, let me move this out of harm's way. These have big puddles, and they're kind of running on me, and I didn't want them to do that. I'm going to let this... Ah, shit. I didn't want that to do that either. Oh, well. That's when I was trying to get, ooh, get the copper colors in, but look at that rose gold, how that just kind of, was that rose gold? No, that was, you know, I think that was the cloves and honey one over here. Yeah, it's all right. It's just okay. Uh, let me take this, my carrier over here, my carrier sheet, and... See what we got with these. This is the first one I did with the black. That's what I was talking about that rose gold, what that was doing in there. see that African jade in that ink. Oops, my computer went dark on me. Let's 
it's not quite dry yet. It is staying pretty black though. And whoa. Uh oh. <laughs> this one, oh, actually, you know what? Maybe not too bad. No, 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 no. This one's this one got away from me a little bit. I might try to doctor this up. That black went kind of crazy and then that ink just pushed it out and it's still really wet. There's a lot of shimmer in it, but um, I might try to do something with that. Out of harm's way, please. Let me get you out of there. Um, wow, I don't even know what to do with this. This may not be savable. Is that a word? Let me let that run in the center. And then try to get that. It's really pretty. If you could see that shimmer that's in there, it's really pretty. But it needs a little something, something in there. I don't know. Let's go. Let's assume we need to break that up with some rose gold. Always a good assumption. I know that's got that black acrylic in it. It's kind of hard to... Hopefully it doesn't mess up my brush. Let's get some... Some of this purple in here, maybe. Will that don't break it up, or will that just really hose me up? Which way are you going to go, purple? This may be one of those experiments. It's some of it's dry, Tim, and some of it's wet. Um, that's the problem. <laughs> what am I going to do with you? Amazonite? Will that lighten it up any? Here's my big old pan of rose gold. Hello. Uh, let's go in here. Salt on the UPO, not good. Yeah, I'm probably I'm going to try to lift some of the color up, uh, Lynn, actually. I wanted to see if this could give me any salvation. Gonna whip up, or does it just gonna be splotchy? Well, you know what? I might just uh, starting to come back a little bit with the, some of the lighter pigments I dropped in there. Um, I wonder. Hmm. 
I got some lagoon in here too. I'll move around some. All right, I'm just going to leave this one sit here and dry. <coughs> now, I don't want to reactivate everything. That's why I'm resisting spraying, and there's too much liquid on here as it is. So I'm trying not to add more is why I'm not spraying this one. We'll see what happens there. If I come back and that's no good when it dries, then I'll probably give it the old one, two with the spray bottle and see what happens there. So um, that ink looks pretty cool though, if you could see that in person. Anywho, all right, kids, I'm gonna go get something to eat and uh, give you a moon paints. No, Safia, I have a couple jars of it. Um, oops. Hang on, my recording hit my three hour limit there. Um, yeah, it did lighten it up a bit. I kind of lost the black though with the metallics from the inks, but that's all right. We'll see. Um, I have a couple of the PBO moon, I think a moon and one of the other ones. And I thought I did something with them years ago when I first got them, just poured them on some kind of a disc or something. And, uh, but I haven't really played with them. Yeah, that's the name fantasy, the prism fantasy and the vitriol. The vitriol I did remember. I don't have that one though, I don't think. Anywho, I'm going to run, guys, and uh, get on with my day and all my chores that has to be done and get something to eat. So, thanks for joining, and I will see you guys later. i got to go give me a minute to save my video. Bye, YouTube.